confetti club it is pixie and oh my god it's 2020 Two, it is the new year i'm feeling fresh i'm already back in school i'm already on that grind so let's film a video about the past high school middle school and others we're gonna forget about the now for right now none of that and I am going to do a video for you guys that has actually been pretty highly requested and I haven't actually properly done a style evolution video and oh my god do I have a colorful past <laughs> oh my god that's the funniest thing ever is that what like <laughs> Is that what talk show hosts are like when people don't laugh and they're like, can you laugh? Over the Christmas holiday, I had a lot of time to reflect. And I have saved together a compilation of various photos of me throughout the years. They begin in grade six, maybe seven. If I don't have a grade six photo and you guys want to see the whole horror that was that it was like the one year i had where like puberty had hit but i hadn't turned like weird yet <laughs> it was like the one year that i had brown hair and boobs and it never came back oh god okay Whoo! alrighty righty righty let's crack open this beast and leave her right there this is like did I glow up the test? So I feel like extra self-conscious in this video because it's literally like, how, look, how many ways can a human have their hair? Okay, I have a very, very fine selection of middle school photos here for you. I think middle school Jillian would have wanted you to introduce her with this photo. This is like kind of the photo that I show people when I'm trying to explain the energy that I had. Uh, but you will see several more. This uh, is one photo that uh, my mom took because my mom's a photographer and that is very fun. <laughs> so we would have little shoots all the time. Anyway, this is one random shoot. We just pulled over on the side of the road during a road trip and um, this happened. Also this one in a field. I'm so quirky. So all of these photos are in <laughs> that era. Here we have yellow hair Jill in Vancouver. I remember this being one of the most miserable trips of my life only because of my mental health. And looking back now, oh my God, I'm sorry, family. I was probably so miserable and sad the whole time um, because I was. And here's a photo of me looking I don't know who I thought I was. I thought I was a cool punk lady. Um, my face looks very androgynous for some reason in this photo. I feel like I look like my brother and it's kind of creeping me out. And um, I just wanna say, this is definitely photoshopped. I am a transparent woman now. Middle school Jillian had a lot of body issues. She was not eating enough and also she was uh, photoshopping her images. So yeah, like my ears weren't even that big, but this one's not photoshopped at all. <laughs> and I look like a tiny rodent boy. <laughs> this is me straight up outside of Stone Park Intermediate. This is my middle school where, um, not where most of the trauma took place, but where most of it was processed um, during science class. So this is me consuming a pixie stick foreshadowing. Um, this photo was taken by my good pal Nathaniel, who I cherish very deeply even though he's very far away and I haven't talked to him forever. Nathaniel, if you ever watch this, how are your 18 million reptiles, my bro? Do you see in the background there, there's like a parted sea of youths? And in the very, very back ground, background, there's like a tiny little figure is that the loneliest little soul you've ever seen? <laughs> I'm sorry. I want to know if you are this kid, <laughs> comment down below. This is a photo of definitely just me in my natural habitat. I did not know this photo was being taken. This is me at one of many local punk shows in our area. Uh, I'm from a very, very small town in a very, very small province in Atlantic Canada. Um, but 
that breeds some very angry, crusty, grungy punks. And um, I, I cherished our community quite a lot and I did a lot of growing there. So here's me falling on the floor. Um, they were all sober events and stuff, so this is just me being obnoxious and goofy and uh, random XD. I am wearing a Joy Division shirt. I do love that album. I am not a poser. <laughs> I also have on a Dropkick Murphy's patch and my Bad Religion patch, which was the only reason that I couldn't wear that vest to school. These red plaid skinny jeans, I think they were in past images. You will see them more again. I have always clung to specific clothing items. The one thing that made me feel comfortable were my red plaid skinny jeans, and I would wear those red plaid skinny jeans. I had two pairs, and I would go boop, 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 and straight up only wear those. Um, I eventually got a gray pair too. <laughs> and on my feet, those are to not ankle, not knee, but middle, middle road, the mid-length Doc Martens. So I was midway cool. I, I, I like this picture. I'm smiling. I like that I'm laughing. I don't like that my friends are like huddled around me concerned, but that's like, honestly, that's <laughs> like, probably accurate. It's fine. Hi, this is editing Jillian. Um, I just wanted to give an auditory trigger warning for self-harm scars, just in case anyone um, is sensitive to that. They are not too uh, like front and center in the photos, but they are sometimes visible in some of my middle school pics. I love you. Oh, okay, here's a photo of me learning how to roller skate. This was definitely taken by my mom. I look very very scrawny here. I can, looking at this image, I feel like I can feel the weight of the freaking skates and the elbow pads and all the padding, because I was like a tiny human at this point and that was heavy. Ooh, my bedroom. I have always had an extra jean. <laughs> that sounds bizarre. Here I am wearing my extra jeans. In my room, you can see the extra jean. I have always just, I don't know, I've needed to decorate my surroundings like a strange bird. There's literal, okay, <laughs> let's address the elephant in the room. <laughs> or perhaps the muse in the room. On my walls, you will see several posters, all <laughs> for the same band. I have always felt a need to just I can't just like something. I have to plaster it everywhere. It has to become everything. It has to be my username. I have to be a collector. I have to be number one on their forum. I have to just, oh, I, and in retrospect, I think it's a BPD thing because all my feelings are just so intense. So think of like BTS K-pop stands. It's like that, the gene of just, I love this thing and I love it so much. It's, it's overwhelming. So in like grade six, my walls were just covered in literally, I got a book of like eight and a half by 11 glossy Harry Potter posters. And I they were like 60 and just, I covered my whole walls. It was just Harry Potter faces. So this was at least a glow up from like Albus Dumbledore watching me sleep. Muse is a rock group from uh, the UK. I love them so much. If I had to describe their music to someone who has never heard them in a human normal way, it would be like experimentally alternative rock that is sometimes spacey and sometimes operatic and sometimes electro and sometimes whatever. They're a lot. I love Muse. They have been my favorite band since grade actually four. Yes, I found them through Twilight. No, I don't care anymore because I'm 21 and they're still my favorite band. Suck it, Mr. Gallant. You told me I grew out of it. I didn't. <laughs> anyway, so uh, yeah, if you think my house is weird now, it probably will always be weird in at least some sort of way because my surroundings have always been just in some way annoying. This is just another iconic photo of me and my element, also outside of Stone Park Intermediate. We, oh, we see the other side of the battle jacket, a sex pistol, two sex pistols patches. You are 
cool. And that was my boyfriend at the time's Slayer shirt, which I think I still have. I'm sorry, my dude. <laughs> oh, I also have uh, my Chemical Romance wristband. I just want everyone to know my wristband was verified MCR. I am a stan. I will forever and always be a stan. This is the back of that same battle jacket that I wore almost every single day um, with a Dead Kennedys patch. And I also made a teeny tiny little voodoo roller derby doll because I made little voodoo style roller derby dolls for all the roller derby girls. Well, not all of them. I I was gonna make roller derby dolls for all the roller derby girls in our league, but that's a lot of girls and I have tiny little hands and the wire was pokey. So I made myself a little voodoo mini me like all normal neurotypical humans do. Um, and I also made her a teeny tiny matching battle jacket with the same patch like all normal non-narcissistic humans do. But <laughs> To be honest, looking back, this is kind of adorable. Are you kidding me? She has the same hair. She has a little hairband. I, that's, that's, that's just a little human trying to, trying to figure out who she is by making a tiny voodoo version of herself. <laughs> Who? okay. I have some more photos from this era, but I don't have a ton to say about it because it was just like a girl in like mostly band tees. Uh, trying her best with various DIY projects on her body. Okay, we are entering the lookbook ages. So we're in Punky Town. <gasps> Will you take me to? Yes. Um, hmm. Grade eight zone, Punky Town zone. Feeling my oats, rah rah, dead Kennedys, bad religion. I have a lot of feelings, mosh mosh. Uh, knock my kneecaps out of place. It's fine. I can still do the carry pemmy pemmy dance. Don't tell my mom. That is a story. Maybe I will tell it one day. <laughs> but as I said, in that other photo of me in my bedroom where you can see the Muse posters, there's also the creeping in anime posters. We got K-On! We got Black Rock Shooter. We got some Haruki Suzumiya up in here. It's beginning. And my style began to morph into kind of a combination of I still identify with the punk alternative scene and I have a lot of anger and feelings and also <gasps> kawaii <laughs> and this happened this image you actually might have seen a couple of these photos got like circulated around the internet a bit like pinterest and like tumblr and stuff and I've had a lot of people that say like I didn't know that was you uh yeah that is me in a joy division shirt with a dress under it with a skirt over. I did a lot of layering. I still think this is a pretty cute look. We're gonna get into actually critiquing fashion instead of just laughing at how I looked. <laughs> Cause the, but before, the, there's not a whole lot of like planning my look that went into maybe the, the more angry punky days. It was just like band shirt, same jeans every day, rah rah, shave my hawk, let's go. Um, and now I was starting to think about like Accessories. I have on here my first pair of Bodyline Rocking Horseshoes, which got a lot of good use. Here is another one. Um, this is probably this is probably my favorite lookbook photo. It's also the very first photo I ever posted to lookbook. This is just this really encapsulates again my energy at this time. I'd say this is grade nine, ten bordering. Same Bodyline shoes. Are those the same tights? No, different tights. This is a different battle jacket, but this one isn't like a punk battle jacket. It is a denim shirt that I decided to spike and stud, and I put my own handmade Mod Podge patches on, which were the Ya yeah, Ya yeah, Ya's. Music taste is changing. And a My Little Pony one, and I believe the back patch was a giant gem in the holograms patch, but I don't show it in this photo. Fashion monster! This is another really early lookbook look. We have a tie-dye shirt. See, there's so much DIY. It's like I just had so much time on my hands and just so much creative energy. Like the shirt I'm wearing here was just a white Gildan shirt that you'd get at like Michael's that I tie-dyed and then just wrote the Smiths on in like marker. That shirt comes back. <laughs> the cardigan is just a black cardigan that was probably just like a fast fashion cardigan that I hand painted that fashion monster drippy text onto with like the red, a drop shadow bitch. 
I still like that cardigan. Um, but Carrie Pamu Pamu news has been less than cool, so maybe it's a good thing I don't have that anymore. Uh, I'm wearing the same Ardeen skirt. Oh, you might hear me say the word Ardeen. That's like a Canadian fashion brand that I used to get a lot of clothes from. And I am sporting baby's first pair of iconic creepers, which I was too excited about. This is just, you know, the fairy canning is kind of beginning. I got my little grubby paws on a Rhapsody wig. Um, this image was stolen by some eBay wig resellers. Um, so I don't know, that's like the only memory I have attached to this look. Oh, this is the first time you see me wearing Angelic Pretty. <gasps> is this my first ever Angelic Pretty item, that bag? It might be. <laughs> I really like this look. Again, because of the DIY factor. This shirt is a shirt that my grandfather got me. It has a unicorn on it and it's extremely precious and I love you granddad, which I have like weirdly folded over a black dress I'm wearing in which I have tucked into the waist a necklace. When you tuck a necklace into your waist, though, <laughs> it is, of course, a muse necklace because I just always have to pay homage to my god. The spike headband has returned. I am nomming on a poly pocket, which is extremely cringeworthy, and I was avoiding talking about that until the very end. This is a sad girl who is sick and also photoshop this unnecessarily badly <laughs> unnecessarily period but also badly <laughs> this is a cute look on a sad sick girl <laughs> um a cute look though wearing those same shoes with different socks oh okay yay friendship 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 this is me at the first and only harajuku fashion walk i've gone to this was in halifax um, several years ago, I think this was, yeah, 2014. Oh, I am here hand in hand with my sweet friend, Kenzie. I love you, Kenzie. She has been on the channel before. I saw her at Lush when I was over for my tattoo. Just so you guys know, Kenzie's alive. She's doing well. <laughs> and yeah, there's probably, I'd say there's a lot to unpack here, but I'm pretty much just wearing like everything I owned at that point. I did some modeling for an Etsy brand called Nerdy Little Secrets. I love you, Mackenzie. Um, that was the first ever brand that like reached out to me and sent me product to model. You know what I mean? Like little Tradesy's Instagram model situation. I definitely credit Nerdy Little Secrets for starting off my like little internet, like, I don't know internet person journey so i am wearing um like everything she sent me in this uh decor outfit this is cute this was actually for a competition that was run by i believe pastel cubes luli um i really like this look this is fun i'm wearing a skirt that i made <gasps> is this the first time i'm wearing like an actual garment that i made a garment it's literally a waistband <laughs> <laughs> with like a rectangle of tulle, like nothing is hemmed, not- It's probably tied around my waist, but it's on! <laughs> and in the photo, you can't tell! <laughs> Handmade skirt! We have a cardigan, thrifted cardigan that I have like elastic tied at my belly button, which I still do. I don't know why I'm saying that, like it's weird, I do that every day. Uh, same My Little Pony shirt as earlier. I like this look. I think it's cute. Ooh, an emo caption. It's beginning. <laughs> I've, I've never been too bad for that, I don't think. This is a cute look, I guess. Again, a very DIY... Actually, this is very DIY. Very die. I'm dyed. I am wearing a white v-neck shirt that, again, is definitely just like a white shirt that we had lying around that I tried to paint the kanji for the word mindfulness on. No one called me out saying it was wrong, so hopefully you guys won't do that as I show it to a lot more people right now. Or if it is, I don't care. Because uh, obviously, you know, I think uh, multiple years ago me can cope. But yeah, mindfulness shirt that for some reason I have over top of this clearly high-waisted skirt that is just trying to escape it. Um, uh, the skirt of which I made, that is one of my first and many circle skirts circle skirts because i pretty much just made circle skirts which i don't want to shame i don't want to shame but i think i just think it's funny because it's like circle skirt number one <laughs> at some point 
I have to face the truth. And the truth is that I had a pretty significant Lolita phase in my life. I, it's not shameful, it's just funny because it was such a big chunk of my YouTube life and it's like so distinct. So this is the beginning of that. I, I don't know, I don't have a lot to say. I wasn't very, like I don't think I had a very good grasp on it yet. Okay, these are not uh, in chronological order, so <laughs> this one I don't think is too terrible. This clearly was Christmas Day, uh, 20 something, maybe 2014, maybe 2015. This is cute, I like this. I, I think this is a sweet little biscuity cord. This, I really, I regret this look on a personal level because I love this print so much. It's called Whip Showcase by Angelic Pretty and I still f***ing love it to this day. But I hate this cohort. It's just like, this is like the only blouse I had. I did not have like good enough petticoats or the correct petticoat to like give it a good shape. It was just, I was very much at this point wearing like what I owned and like there's no shame in that. I can just tell that if I could go back I would give her a short blouse. I would give her a pink blouse. I would break up the colors a little bit. I would give her a friggin' bracelet. I would completely change the wig. I would like brush my bangs out of my eyes maybe. Yeah, there would be changes made. I like this dress. This was a nice day. I just really wish I like, I wish in my Lolita days I had photos I could look back on and be more like, ah, uh, instead of like, this is a little winter moment. Um, we love a bodyline shoe. Uh, this is clearly a mom photo with a mom watermark, which is very sweet. And this is an in the wild photo at an anime convention. This is me in real life wearing Lolita with what looks like no makeup on. Like, I'm sorry I'm just roasting myself. I probably have makeup on, but like, I just feel like my lips should be a color. I feel like they should, I feel like something should be happening. And again, like, just someone get this woman a petticoat. <laughs> I say this all out of love. I say this all out of love. I look very happy, very sweet. My friend took this photo. It was a very sweet time. I like my head accessories. I like the cakey. I like the cakey, and I still have that 6% star that I wear still to this day. This is me on my sweet 16. This is my sweet 16 birthday party. I had a little tea party with like my five friends at the time. And this photo kind of freaks me out because I feel like this almost just looks like me now. Like, can we get a, can we get a... <gasps> Are we disturbed? <laughs> Is that me? Well, it is me. I don't know why I'm surprised that a photo of me looks like me. <laughs> I think it's just because in my mind, I looked so different in the past. But for one small blip on my 16th birthday, I kind of looked like I do now. Oh, this was my first modeling shoot for Nerdy Little Secrets. I'm living my life. We get a closer up picture of that aforementioned jackety thing more jackety thing, wearing the same Ardeen skirt with those same tights, with those same shoes. You will notice I owned the same things and I am an outfit repeater and will always be. Okay, there is a <laughs> flipping between like photographs from a photo shoot that your mom took that has all been edited and then like photos of you at a con will always be jarring. <laughs> I, I should have laid this out differently. I'm doing myself a disservice. Yeah, this is a girl trying that. This must have been before the other look because this is not as good. This was my first ever Lolita dress. This has to be my first attempt at Lolita. Please let this be my first attempt at Lolita. On it, I hate this look so much. I don't want to talk about it again. Happy girl, meaning well. I stop at the shoes and the lack of petty. And again, I feel like I just really wish I had like makeup on that matched it. And that is all of the photos I've saved on my drive because after that point, I was on the internet. <laughs> but let's go through, cause I know not all of you have been here for five years watching my every move and I don't blame you. I do wanna go through some of the photos just kind of as this style was developing um, because it definitely was a process. If you guys don't know, here's just the rundown of like my style journey and kind of how it happened. So at this point I'm in grade, I think 10 to 11 and I'm starting, let me put on my coiffe 
So at this point, I'm in full Lolita mode. I identify as a lifestyle Lolita. I turn my room into like fancy, I get like these Baroque frames. I'm like angelic pretty, baby, feeling it, pink, ivory. I, and I went through kind of like two different Lolita phases. But the tricky thing is some fashion is just fashion, like clothes you wear. And some fashion can associate you with a group of people and it becomes a whole community and a subculture and it's beautiful and wonderful and that's one of my favorite things and I wouldn't trade it for the world. But I did find myself in a bit of a pickle because I had like fully immersed myself as a lifestyle Lolita YouTuber and I had like branded the frig out of myself at age what, like 15, 16? And I was wanting to go into fashion design school and I had felt like I had like sold my soul to this aesthetic, which it is a fact that Lolita fashion is a stricter aesthetic. You have to have certain silhouettes and things for it to be considered Lolita. And I started to, yeah, feel a little bit like, do I really, do I really wanna like make this my whole world and my whole everything and like, oh my God. And that's why I left Lolita. <laughs> and I made a dramatic video called My Fashion Journey or something where I talked about how I was like not quitting Lolita, but like kinda I was, but at the time I didn't really think I was. I was like, I'm just gonna step back. And it turned into me just completely snowballing and turning into a rainbow. So at this point, I was in a degree of a public eye. I think I had like, mm -hmm maybe like around 50,000 subscribers. So that's overwhelming for a high school person or any person. And it did become kind of like a public dramatic, like why I left Buzzfeed, like why I left Lolita thing. Anyway, so I felt it necessary to mention that whole fashion thing, talking about my style evolution. And as I realized I wanted to kind of tiptoe away from just Lolita fashion and experiment with other things and kind of free my soul to other opportunities. Interesting things happened. <laughs> I first went to Hime Gyaru, which is... I could make a whole 18 videos on Gyaru, but basically it's like princessy daily style from Japan with big hair, still usually like natural colors like brown or tan or blonde hair, um, big fluffy frilly pink, pink, blah, blah, blah. I'll put pictures cause I can't use words. And I think I literally stuck with that for maybe a month before dabbling in other things. And I eventually started to kind of put together my own made up style that I called Party K. I guess I feel like I was probably so scared that I didn't want to box myself into one group that I ended up kind of deciding to make my own like name for my own style and I was just like, that's what I am. And I kind of took elements from a lot of the styles that I liked. Um, you can still search the Party K hashtag. It is still quite active. I do still consider what I wear Party K, but um, it can also be considered other things. It's like, there's Venn diagrams, you know, part, like I didn't invent fashion. This is like a sub style that has like cakes and like specific themery. Anyway, but for a good chunk of the time, I started just like, I was like, party time, birthdays, icing, rainbows, sprinkles, let's go. And the confetti club was born. <laughs> I definitely immediately snuck towards more Otome styles. If you guys aren't into J fashion, this is probably gonna make no sense. Um, but it was very still like frilly and feminine. There were more rainbows. A lot of people compared it to Larm K, which I get. It's like kind of larmy. It's kind of fairy k e. It's kind of otome e. Like, there's a lot of words we can use for things. This is what it looked like. Party K is a combination of things, cause everything's kind of a combination of things. But yeah, there's like pom poms and gingham. I'm just going through my feed trying to see whatever the hell I was up to. I have rainbow hair, but like my clothes are more lacy and pastel than like vibrant and like pow, pow. Mostly my hair was just really cool. 
That's why my username is Pixie Locks, by the way, because I like my I like hair. <laughs> That's a terrible explanation of my username. <laughs> I'm gonna only leave that up in, in a year from now, three years from now, I'll tell you the real reason why. I mean, yeah, it was like a vague, a vague pastel rainbow semi frilly experience. And the frills kind of dissipated into, into like rhinestones. <laughs> And I like, I like that the, that experimentation came back. I started gluing shit together again. I started making my own clothes again. I started doing, putting glitter in my friggin' roots, I guess. I guess everyone was doing that. And it's more or less kind of stayed the same up to this point. I'm still quite rainbow. My hair still changes. I, I guess I've stuck with like the rainbow aesthetic a lot more hardcore than just kind of like bright and multicolored. Like I'm I'm very, very like I like to drive home the rainbows. They need to be in Roy G. Biv order or it does not count. Yeah, like if you look at my feed today, there is very rarely an opportunity missed to put the rainbow colors in order, <laughs> whether it's like whether it's straight up just like I plaster a rainbow over it or I like it's just I posted the photo because there literally was a rainbow in it or it's my hair or it's a mug that I put there or it's this wall or it's like I just my notes like I literally just refuse to post something unless there's a rainbow in it am I okay <laughs> and that is my style evolution journey up to this point. I hope you enjoyed. Um, please let me know if you guys have any interesting style, stories, memories, interesting things you used to wear. One of my favorite things is Amelia Fart's video where she shows her old photos of her and she wore like bounce up, like light up bouncy balls around her neck. 2012, the descent begins. If you look closely at the photographic evidence, I am wearing three circular objects around my neck. Those are, in fact, bouncy balls. But not just bouncy balls. Inside of the bouncy balls are eyeballs that light up when bounced. I would buy light up eyeball bouncy balls, duct tape them to a piece of string, and wear them around my neck every day. That I just feel like is so much of the energy. I would love to hear of more people that used to wear light up bouncy balls around their necks um, so we can convene in our similarities because I had a lot of hot glue on my body at all times. I'm in absolute awe that I haven't featured this person's art yet, so we are doing it right now. This video's Speech Confetti Club member is Animated Lee on Instagram who did this just amazing piece of artwork where like I have become my sewing station at school ah! so okay mm. the the cloud skirt from the cloud paper I can put a photo of like what my desk looks like so you guys understand the mastery that has happened here the lights around the skirt and the see-through transparent rainbow very form ruler uh and the, the planty plant, the jade plant vines, oh, that plant died, and I'm so sorry to tell you guys I am a plant murderer. Oh, it's adorable. And the little ruler belt, and the little grid board bodice, and the pins, and the highlight, and the nails, and the my heels are pins. It's just there's so much attention to detail here. It blows my mind. Thank you so much. I know I commented on this. Uh, like a month ago, I upped up, up, and now the world can see. I love you guys all so, so much, and I will see you in the next video, which is not this one, because this one is over. Bye! been a weird little annoying loser. No, I'm great. <laughs>